Hello everybody, and just here, and welcome back to Fry episode 10, in which we will probably continue the fight inside of uh, Tietas or Lenyas? Lenyas. Uh, Amara Rirku. Uh, nothing really... Uh, nothing would really point us in the direction that it's anywhere near resolution anywhere near completion so that's probably what's going to happen let's be honest here uh i mean honesty has nothing to do with it that's just how it looks <laughs> uh right so in a previous episode in uh, the previous episode uh, that was already the continuation of uh, the battle inside of uh, Tsvietas Amara Rirku. Uh, as far as significant events, not all that much happened, honestly. Uh, the one significant thing that happened would be, I would guess, uh, the fact that Tsvieta somehow, for some reason, for some purpose, uh, got into Pepesha's head to hunt for memories, right? She mentioned that, uh, what is it, world or person or something like that is, or Amara Rirku, it's the world, it's the, uh, the emotions, and it's the memories. And she's just missing the memories and uh, managed to get them from Pepesha. Uh, none of that got us even a step closer to figuring out who is she, what does she have to do with Pepesha's mother, I don't know, all of those are still uh, very much mysteries. Why is there a piece of hair on my face? Is it hair or is it my cat's hair? That's, that's also a very good question. Um, right, uh... Svieta managed to get those memories out of Pepesha, uh, started crying, Pepesha started kind of sort of recognizing her as her mother, so there is some some shenanigans going on there that maybe, maybe she actually is Pepesha's mother, maybe she uh, mimics uh, mother really well, we still have no clue why Svieta was frozen on the North Pole, we still have no clue why uh, why Stigma targeted her, it's all just one big, huge, enormous mystery to me, and probably to everybody else as well. Uh, tell me your experiences, are you just as lost as I am, or, <laughs> or have you managed to figure things out more? I know, I'm curious, maybe I'm just a little slow on, uh, on understanding this show. Uh, then... Right, we also know that uh, Stigma is in the city. And, uh, and Teru is being kept in place by Kufufu. Because Kufufu is wearing a uh, firefighter outfit and everybody knows that firefighter outfits are fire resistant. So it's a perfect foil to Teru. Uh, fighting Kufufu really feels like fighting the mask. You know, Jim Carrey, the mask. It's fun. It's fun. Also, uh, one more very important thing, at least I think it's very important, is how the actions of the heroes kind of cement the beliefs of the members of Amara Rirku, right? Uh, I mentioned that in a previous episode, how Kufufu just wants to make people have fun, just wants to make people laugh with her bombs. So she sets off a bomb and the heroes are not laughing, the heroes are angry. Why are you angry at me bringing people joy? Are you a bad pe bad person by chance? Only a bad person would be against joy, right? It's, it's very interesting. This entire show really is deeply psychological. Actually, I wonder if it's, if it's tagged anywhere on... Uh, any list or um, my anim list as psychological. I have any list on hand, so I'm just gonna check it real quick. Does it have psychological tag? Because it should. Probably more than any other horror kind of a show or drama kind of a show that touts itself as being uh, 
um, as being, what you might call it, uh, psychological. No, there is no psychological tag. Henshin, female protagonist, superhero shonen, superpower ninja, LGBTQ plus themes, primarily female cast. Yeah, the the usual, or rather what I would expect. Not psychological. It should be. It absolutely should be, if you ask me. Uh, so, that's where we are. Uh, Teru is incapacitated. Um, Pepesha is uh, a little bit in Lenya's uh, thrall. And uh, the other... Pe oh, that's another thing that I forgot to mention. Uh, the people from the orphanage also seem to be mind-controlled by, uh, by Tsvieta. But she doesn't see it as mind control. She sees it as that's just how they are. Those are their legit, true, real feelings. And she truly believes that. But we know that no. No, all those people are just crying inside and being desperate to escape the confines of their own mind. And on the outside, their mind controlled bodies are saying uh, what. Um, what Sveta wants them to say. Very interesting. There's like layers of psychological manipulation going on, right? I, I fully believe that the members of Amara Rirku might be mm, uh, might be controlled in like psychologically controlled uh, by stigma. Uh, I fully believe, or rather, it's my running theory that stigma himself might not even know the full extent of what he's doing. He himself might have been, I know, convinced by some elder god to do his bidding. It's really just layers and layers and layers of control, and not just, like, magic sort of mind control, but, like, you know, psychological <laughs> mind control, where if you tell a person lies enough times they start believing that it's the truth those those sorts of things uh yeah i'm uh, really curious where is it going to go i mean probably ted with her uh psychotherapy powers uh but how exactly well that remains to be seen so how about we just see that right uh, to do it you will need your subs of course to follow along with me I'm gonna need my sound to hear what's going on in the show and I'm gonna have to ask you for your support, support the channel if you want monetarily on Patreon, YouTube, down below or not, share my content, spread the word, costs you nothing and helps a lot. And with that, we can start watching Shy episode 10 in 3, 2, 1, go! Um, I have no sound? Oh, I somehow muted it. Sure, okay. Yep, stealing Pesha's memories. Uh, it seems like Lenya had a big, huge gripe with the world. That's why her Amara Rirku shuts off the outside world, basically. But we still don't know what even was that gripe. Why was she so... Is she so against the outside world? Hmm. It wouldn't surprise me, actually. I'm gonna take a note of it. Uh, it wouldn't surprise me in the slightest if those were the things that are just the most firmly in her memory, right? Like, she remembers all the bad things uh, that happened because of the other people, but she doesn't remember the good parts. And Shy somehow reminds her of the good parts, and that uncorrupts her. It's a fairly common trope, and I wouldn't be surprised if they did just that. Uh, Lenya remembers only the bad shy 
makes her remember the good that and corrupts her right like uh, stigma on purpose purposefully doesn't allow them to keep the good memories something like that yeah we heard that but we don't know the exact details What does it... I couldn't read what it says on them. Okay, so they were living in poverty. Pesha, okay. How does an onion sound? I mean, honestly, fried onions? That's some good food. Not particularly rich or filling, but it's tasty. Huh? Oh, right, Russia. She's not as... Oh, I thought she's not asleep but unconscious or something like that. And a bottle of vodka. KGB, open up! Oh, rent. Can't you go back to the orphanage and help around there? I mean, I guess the orphanage is also struggling finan financially, so... Uh, yeah, you probably can't. Pesha just wanted to split with you. <laughs> I 
and that's when she gave her up for the uh, for the orphanage. Yeah, too expensive, still. Yeah, there is good in this world, isn't there? And then she was attacked by the homeless guy and killed. Yep. There comes the homeless guy and she was thrown into the river. Frozen. And age regressed by stigma somehow. Uh, I guess that would check out. Assuming it's like legit actually her. Right, she wants to she wants to shut them all in this orphanage because it's the best place she knows. Oh? How, how did you see that as well? Oh, I guess everybody did, huh? I mean, she seems to be smiling already. Yes, you should have. <laughs> Yeah, I'm st I still have my doubts. <sighs> is it just a copy who managed to steal the memories or is it actually her? Oh yeah, losing her bracelet powers. 
then tell her, please. Yep, the Henshin. Oh? Okay, there we go! Shy Ex Machina! <laughs> Thankfully, Kufupu isn't entirely competent. <laughs> there we go! Therapy powers activated! Yeah. And here is the embodiment of that flame. There we go. Please do. If everything goes well, Pepesha gets her mother back. Otherwise, I don't know, they at least free the existing people from, from this Amara Rirku. Oh, a crown? Don't you fucking press anything. That was my cat <laughs> passing on my desk. Yeah, don't get blown away. She doesn't discriminate who she uses her powers against. Yeah, burning hotter than ever. Not enough. Shy ain't no quitter. Even more ice. Which is not really going to work against fire, is it? This is the power of heart. Yeah, but not as strong as the indomitable human spirit. <laughs> That's what it is, isn't it? The indomitable human spirit. Indomitable? Indomitable? What's the correct word here? Do you feel the warmth yet? Hmm.
oh, so she just stole your heart. You, like, broadcasted your memories and emotions to this whole area. Yeah, I mean, she wouldn't be a hero if she had a bad upbringing. But you were doing what you could. That's what matters. The ra rising music. Oh? Yeah, still not enough to stop her. <laughs> God damn, she's unstoppable when she when she wants to be. Yeah, and they are nothing against the flame of love and human spirit. She's actually the mentor, isn't she? <laughs> Oh, glowing? Yeah, the glow of the candlelight, the exact same, like, shade, the exact same color. And there's... Terus flame. To be continued in the next episode. Jesus. That's that's a long fight. I'm really used to fights being solved in the matter of like an episode, an episode and a half at most. This is already the second full episode of Just the Fight, third episode of this arc. Huh. Now, do mind, I'm not, like, against it or anything. On the contrary, I'm very positively surprised. And also, it sucks that it's only 12 episodes. <laughs> Hopefully it gets another season.
<laughs> this episode at least made a couple of things a little more clear, I guess. It's still just one huge mystery. Make no mistake. But it slowly, slowly starts opening up. Oh, Omake! Sure, let's go. Okay. Do we get... Oh, another Omake. Sure. There we go. Uh, Ty... Oh, we don't get the title of the next episode. Okay, sure. That was, uh, that was a fun omake. Uh, let's watch this episode again. Again, there we go. Uh, yeah, a bit of a recap before the opening. Uh... Hmm. Yeah, I'm uh, looking at the opening, uh, looking for some people that might have not appeared yet. Uh, but no, everybody has. Yeah, everybody had an appearance. Not everybody had, like, full arc, but everybody had an appearance. So chances are we're not going to be starting any other arcs. Uh, instead, uh, episode 11 will... Uh, I, th I would think... Episode 11 will conclude this fight, and episode 12 will be... Uh, summary. Yeah. Maybe Teru going for a date with Iko. That would be a nice ending. I know. Episode 10, The Lonely Eyes and Small Flame. Uh, we get a backstory on, uh, on Lenya. And also on Pepesha. Uh, which is kind of interesting, because you wouldn't think that, like, Pepesha's backstory would be that important. Mm, what does it say? Otlichni podarok dla dzieciej. Something gift for the children. Nedorog Koi. Cheap. Otlich, otlichni, uh, like Christmas? Cheap Christmas gifts for children? Something along those lines. And yeah, uh, living in Russia during recession sucks. <laughs> living in Russia sucks. <laughs> That country hasn't gotten any better since the times of the fucking Tsars. It's only getting worse, I swear. <laughs> so yeah, you... If you're born in Russia and not to an oligarch, you've already lost that life, I'm afraid. Uh, what's the matter, Pesha? And Pesha, of course, wasn't the greatest with words. So she couldn't, like vocalize what she actually meant so lenya took the wrong the wrong impressions the wrong lessons from it right like here pesha came here to comfort lenya to warm her hands a little bit with her own hands right out of the place of concern meanwhile in lenya's mind it was oh she must be hungry i'm a failure of a mother there's only an onion in the fridge and fuck what am I gonna do? Right? Like, a complete discrepancy in how they see the exact same situation. Uh, that's where those issues stem from. 
I remember having a fridge like that. <laughs> with a freezer up top, always more filled with ice than with anything else. And uh, if you did want to take out some, I don't know, frozen dill or something, you would genuinely have to chip away at the ice to get things out. Uh, onion. Fried onion. Again, it's it's food. It's food. I have experience being a uh, child living in poverty. So, fried onions and a slice of bread, that, that was dinner. <laughs> that was dinner. And honestly, I still like fried onions. Market. Uh, of course, recession, job cuts. And again, Pepesha draws her mother and herself happy in a fun place of uh, cookies and uh, and pies and uh, candy and stuff like that. And meanwhile, Lenya takes a lesson from it of, uh, fuck, I'm a failure. I can't even smile for my own child. I cannot give her the things she drew here. Right? A completely, like, depressive thinking. Here, Pesha is content just being with her mother, having fun drawing, and... Uh, and Pesha, is, Pesha, Lenya is just completely depressed. Again, it's really no wonder, because they are living in abject poverty. So, in the recession, in Russia, which is like three layers of fucked... Uh, so, yeah, it's no wonder. But still, and here we have the gesture of Pesha giving her portion to Lenya, and Lenya wanting Pesha to eat everything, and eventually just breaking and bursting and, uh, and screaming, yelling at her. Again, everything out of the place of concern, out of the place of caring for one another. But Lenya's thoughts are very much clouded at this point. This was also a scene that, like, almost made me tear up. Maybe even made me tear up a little bit. Uh, I remember, I don't have that, mem that many memories from my childhood, but this one I do remember. Uh, one packet of instant ramen in three times the amount of water so that everybody in our family can eat something. And this, like, one bowl of soup, watery, shitty soup being shared across two people, it really struck a chord. It really did. Yeah, everything out of place of care. You haven't eaten anything in so long, I just wanted to share. Uh, and yeah, depressive thoughts, suicidal ideation, and fucking homeless bums having to fuck everything up. Just when Lenya got a little bit of kindness, right? A little bit of kindness. There has to be a motherfucker like this. Right? To just destroy the singular, tiny little moments of happiness, eh? Not even caring about the cake, because we know that the cake just lay there on the ground. People suck, sometimes. People really can suck. And what's that? Uh, is that even... S That's not Cyrillic. That's not Cyrillic. Ya... L? Uh... And the... 
second line is backwards, like mirrored. Korolieb. Lieb. Liebian. Liebianoia. Oh, it, the title is just mirrored. Liebianoia. Korolieba. Liebianoia Korolieba. Uh, something story? Uh, Korolie Korolieva. Liebliano, Lieblianoia, Korolieva. Beloved Queen, uh, Lie, Bia, no, Liebianoia. Ljubljana, it's a Slovenian city, but no, that's not what I mean. Um, translate. Sorry that I'm just stuck on it for for a while, but I'm actually curious. Lie, bia, no ja. Libyanoia Swans uh, Swan Queen, Queen of the Swans Queen of Swans No Swan Princess The Swan Princess is a series of movies Based on the Ballet Swan Lake. Okay, I know. Unless Korolie Korolieva is ballet and not queen. I know. I I took Russian a little bit in uh, high school, and that's where my knowledge comes from. And uh, we have an answer as to why Pesha landed in the. Uh, in the orphanage. And we also have an answer as to the motivations of Lenya, because she genuinely suffered so much injustice, she genuinely suffered so much shit from other people. So, of course, she would want to protect this place that she belongs from the outside world that's just evil. Now, her motivations make perfect sense. And, uh, yeah, that makes perfect sense. It's also in line with Stigma's modus operandi of uh, utilizing people's darkest parts, darkest parts of their hearts, right? In not freeing their entire heart, but rather uh, freeing only the negative part, just like Iko uh, had, her, um, uh, had her hatred for herself, and hatred for Teru a little bit even, or rather for Shai, freed, but not the good parts, not the good chunks of her heart. Same goes for Lenya. What was freed is her hatred of the outside world, not her love for her daughter, uh, not her, uh, not the uh, pastry chef that gave her the cake, right? None of that. Only the evil, only the bad, only the wrongs. Interesting. Uh, I'd even become a demon and destroy this world, and that's kind of what she wants to do. Protect Pepesha, protect all the other children from the outside world by becoming a demon that is to destroy the rest of the world. Uh, we still have no answer as to why she is Pepesha's mother, right? Like, why... Uh, did she actually survive? Did Stigma clone her? What exactly happened? Um, I guess you could argue that it was Russia, there was a river, her body got carried with the river uh, to the sea, to the North Pole, she got frozen in ice and that's where Stigma found her. That would probably be the best explanation that I have. Another explanation would be, would be of course, that Stigma somehow 
created her clone. But why her specifically? How did he get material to create that clone, right? Even the emotions and memories, uh, whatever memories she had, right? Why did she call Pepesha Pesha? Uh, why did she have such a sentiment for this orphanage, right? How did how would Stigma know about it? So the only explanation would be that she is actually Lenya resurrected. Somehow. We don't know how exactly, we don't know why she was age regressed, but that would probably be the best explanation I have. Uh, pain in the butt. Will the heroes be able to make Sveta chance smile? I mean... She was smiling by the end of this episode, so hey, I guess they were able to. The mama you hate, you loathed me, didn't you? That's exactly what Lenya was thinking all this time, right? My daughter must hate me because I wasn't able to, get, to give her a cake. My daughter must hate me because I wasn't able to make her a feast. And so on and so forth. And uh, Pesha very much reverted to that child self, unable to speak up, unable to say anything, unable to clear the um, the uh, confusion, the, misunder the misunderstanding that her mother is under, right? Uh, I'll even embrace all the hatred in this world, and that's kind of what she's doing, right? Embodying... The hatred. My heart is already a flutter, already isn't steady. And here comes the flame, here comes Teru. Thankfully, again, thankfully Kufu isn't entirely competent. <laughs> you have no idea just how precious you are to Pepesha son. The kindness you showed her continues to live in Spirit's heart. Yeah, Pesha is a good girl, which means she had to have a good mother. Not always the case. Uh, there are really good people who come out of really bad homes because they just swear to never repeat the mistakes of their parents, for example. So it's not always a given, but for the most part, it's true. And similarly, there are bad people that who are a result of a good upbringing. Perhaps too good of an upbringing. Maybe. I know. Uh, there is a saying that struggle builds character, right? Maybe everybody needs a little bit of struggle in their life, at least, to be a good, well-rounded people. That's how strong and warm it was. Yeah, that little tiny candle, sure, it wasn't much of a flame, it didn't give much of a light, it didn't give any warmth, but it was the symbol of your mother caring for you. And being able to give you at, at least this, at least this much. Uh -huh, 174, 58 kilo, blood type 0, so the perfect donor. Age 27, Pepesha Andrianova, Russian alcohol bread, airy hero who uses smoke. 27, interesting. Uh, you very rarely in anime see protagonists that are older than 20, so... Hey, a breath of fresh air. Uh, flames, you just want to cozy up forever. Flames that can burn you. Uh, also, I really like this design. Uh, I uh, I mention it decently often, I think. I really like floating shit. I don't know, I really like floating weapons. I really like, like floating detached crystalline wings, like she has here. Floating bits that make a crown. I really like it. Actually, uh, reminds me, I've seen a screenshot from Ragna Crimson of a character who has no arms but has like a mechanical arms floating by their shoulders. I made a mistake not watching Ragna Crimson and I'm gonna have to make up for it. <laughs> Maybe during the uh, Christmas break I'm just gonna watch binge it all in like two days. I know, we'll see. Uh, see, she's smiling. The Kufufu blew up Teru for no reason at all. <laughs> Her powers have grown even stronger, yeah, but so did Shai's. Uh, Shai grows the stronger the 
stronger she has to grow. It really seems to me that way, right? The more peril she is in, the more uh, the higher the stakes are, the stronger she grows. Amazing fight, uh, by the way. I really, really, really enjoy how strong Teru can be. How strong and how, like, steadfast, if that's even the correct word to use here. But what I mean by that is that on the daily, she's just a bumbling, stuttering mess. But when push comes to shove, she, like, puts on a serious mask and starts blasting. And there's nothing stopping her. I really like that. Just who are you? She's the embodiment of, of a heart. Of human heart. Indomi... Indomitable. Yeah, indomitable is the word. I had to double check it. She is the indomitable human spirit. She is the positive emotions. She is the good side of people's hearts. Where stigma brings up all of the negative parts, Shy brings up all of the positive ones. She is the perfect foil to stigma. Good shit. All I can sense from your eyes is loneliness. It, it, it ain't gonna work against me. Your loneliness powers, they are nothing. You think you can understand my heart? Yes, actually. You showed it to me. And I see in the depths of other people's hearts, other people's loss, other people's regret. I understand what you're going through. I get it. Yeah, it's because of the love she inherited from you. You must be a good person because she is a good person. Truly, indomitable human spirit. And uh, Pesha gets a chance to talk to her mother, finally. Uh, that's why I could never leave her alone. Yeah, Teru really seems to be the, the heart of their organization. She already shook up uh, Stardust a little bit. Now she gives the spark, the little eye flame to Pepesha. Everybody's gonna benefit from Shy being here. Great art, by the way. Some really cool shots here. And here comes Pesha. And here the flame, right? Pepesha's color is blue as a superhero, and yet there is that glow. There is that sepia-toned, orange-brown glow of the candlelight. Scared you might end up ha hating me. Yeah, it was just all a matter of epic size miscommunication, basically. Lifetimes spanning miscommunication. My first ever all-out fight between mother and daughter. There we go. To be continued. Uh, I was really expecting this fight to conclude in this episode uh, when uh, when Pepesha joined the fray right here I fully expected Pepesha to just say some words hug, uh, hug Lenya and then uh, Lenya's facial marks fall off she grows older and there, solved, roll the credits we're gonna deal with the fallout in episode 11 but no not quite that easy, not quite that fast. Episode 11 will still have some nice content in it, it would seem. Uh, the finale of the fight, probably, and the uh, little bit of a fallout. And episode 12, I don't know, episode 12 is going to be something so much cuter without your hood. And attracting seals. See, whenever... Uh, this is also interesting that we see them in the omake. Uh, whenever 
we as viewers are supposed to care about the villains and in more than just um more than just seeing their backstory right oh they were bullied as a child that's why now they wield the power of magnetism to crush people's bones right B besides just that if we see something more if we maybe follow uh, the bad guys around every now and then if we see them in omakes like that uh, that tells me that they are more or less permanent uh, rather it could go two ways actually either uh, the show is making us care about them a lot so that them dying eventually hits more kind of like it was in akamega kill for example or they show them to us so that we grow to like them ahead of time uh, ahead of when they will be joining our side or they will be rescued from the clutches of the evil mastermind controlling them right it could go either of those two ways uh, what it tells us uh, for sure is that they are not disposable there are disposable antagonists, there are disposable villains. We don't really know their motivations. They just say, oh, I want to rule the world because I'm evil and I want power. And uh, they get punched in the face, thrown down a cliff, they die, and that's it. Next villain, please. Those aren't this kind of a villain. Definitely not. They aren't like Stigma's grunts or anything of the sort. We are supposed to care about them. To what end? That remains to be seen, of course. Okay. Ah. Really good episode. Some really good fighting. Some really strong emotional moments, particularly for, for me, perhaps. Uh, I still... I still really... Hmm. I'm still in awe a little bit of how this show can do so much and so many like switches, right? Like on one hand we have all those shonen -y fights. And they're good. They're cool. They're great. On the other hand, we have those very serious moments tearjerkers almost to a predictable degree right as soon as i saw the homeless guy giving her a glance as she's entering the shop i already knew that this homeless guy is going to kill her because that would bring up the levels of drama that's just how it is and then it gives us some funny moments like with kufufu and then it gives us some heartwarming moments right it has like everything uh, usually shows focus on mo uh, not fuck how do I word it <laughs> how do I find the correct words to say what I want to say mm. right uh, usually in a show if we're doing a shonen battle we're doing a shonen battle maybe some comedic moment here and there uh, maybe a little bit of a tearjerker here and there, but we focus on the shonen battle at a given moment. Then we're going through the uh, flashback backstory of the main character, and it's so sad, so tearjerky. And in that flashback, we don't have those shonen battles, we don't have those funny moments, we just focus on that. Meanwhile, in case of Shy, it just gets combined to the point where it almost contrasts where it almost gives me whiplash at times but i don't take it negatively oddly enough usually if i were to see a uh, sad moment like pesha's and lenya's backstory then immediately followed by kufufu's shenanigans it would just what we are just switching themes just so abruptly so quickly but somehow it works in case of Shy. I don't know why exactly. 
perhaps because everything has also an element of everything else. Uh, what I mean by that is Kufufu's antics, for example, also have some underlying issues like that. Because just like Lenya was born of the darkness in someone's heart, we can assume that Kufufu was born of something else. So those antics are not just lol random, but rather someone's inner child trying to express themselves and not knowing how. For example, right? Those shonen battles don't give me whiplash after the sad moments either, because those sad moments are underlying those shonen battles. Right? It all just kind of kind of merges together. It's not binary of funny, sad, shonen. It's funny with some shonen and some sad, sad with some funny and some shonen, and shonen with some funny and some sad. It just, it just works. I know, I know any better way to put it. It just works. Trademark by Todd Howard. Thorpeel doesn't work though, so I guess that adage has to has to go away soon enough. Uh yeah, good episode. Uh answered some questions I had. Mostly that question was about Lenya's motivations. Uh still keeps plenty of mystery, but I feel like I'm kind of wading through the snow, wading through the dark and mist. Not necessarily knowing where I'm going, am I going in the right direction or not, but I see that the sounds of, I know, a road are getting louder and louder, so I'm probably getting closer to civilization, right? That's, that's kind of the feeling I'm getting here. Good stuff. Good stuff. I like it. I enjoy it. Uh, I hope there's a second season, because 12 episodes really seems too few. <laughs> especially if I wanted more uh, Teru and Iko moments. And uh, I'm going to be honest, after this much serious events, I I kind of long for the simpler times of Teru and Iko just going to a, uh, to a shopping mall and Teru uh, doing some uh, calligraphy, right? Those slice of life moments really matter, uh, as was proven, at least to me, by Simple Gear. Uh, so... I guess that's gonna be it. Maybe you guys have something more to add on the topic of this episode. Tell me all about it in the comments below. What did you think of it? Uh, what did you think of my reaction, my theories, stuff like that? All of that down below. Not spoilers though, please. Spoilers can go to my Discord up here, also linked in the description, not in the comments. Uh, like this video if you liked it. Subscribe to be notified of future videos, not only Shy, but also Magia Record. Helk, Shangri-La Frontier, Tate no Yusha, Sahet and Paladin, and plenty of others coming in the future. Click the bell to be notified of when I go live, because I do stream sometimes. Support the channel if you want monetarily on Patreon, linked down below, where for 10 bucks a month you get early access to non-seasonal shows like Magia Record, and for just a dollar you get a role on the Discord and a place in the credits. You can also support me directly on YouTube itself via memberships, super thanks, stuff like that. And if you don't want to spend any money whatsoever, you don't have to. Share my content, spread the word, it costs you absolutely nothing and helps the channel a lot. And now, with all of that out of the way, that's gonna be it from me for today. So as always, you guys do all the good stuff, and I'm gonna see you in the next one. Cheers! And here's my one through Patreons, QB, without a net, the Cooper Survivor, Zerainer, Akamaster, Dr. Ward, Marshy, Kale, Fassel, and Hans Peter. And you can join them without having to split your soup with anybody.